I always wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about its natural beauty, rugged mountains, and breathtaking landscape. So when I found a cheap deal online for a solo cabin rental at High Plains Camping, I didn't hesitate to book it. The campsite was located in Oakley, a small town in the western part of the state. It had 70 RV sites, 12 cabins, and a few tent sites. It also had facilities like a pool, a playground, a laundry room, and a store. It seemed like a perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the campsite on a sunny afternoon in late September. The owner greeted me warmly and gave me the key to my cabin. He said it was one of the oldest cabins on the site, but it had been renovated recently and had all the amenities I needed. He also warned me that the nights could get cold and windy, so I should keep the windows and doors locked. I thanked him and drove to my cabin. It was a small wooden structure with a porch, a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a bathroom. It looked cozy and comfortable. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the campsite. I walked around and saw a few other campers, mostly families and couples. They smiled and waved at me as I passed by. I also saw some wildlife, like squirrels, rabbits, and birds. I felt a sense of peace and happiness. I returned to my cabin as the sun was setting. I made myself some dinner and watched some TV. I felt a bit lonely, but I reminded myself that this was a chance to reconnect with myself and nature. I decided to go to bed early and get some rest. I woke up in the middle of the night to a loud noise. It sounded like something was banging on the door. I jumped out of bed and grabbed a flashlight. I looked through the peephole and saw a dark figure outside. It was wearing a hooded cloak and holding a large axe. It was trying to break into my cabin. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I quickly locked the door and dialed 911, but there was no signal. I realized I was trapped and alone. I heard the door splintering and cracking. The figure was getting closer. I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. I hoped that the door would hold long enough for someone to come and help me. I heard the figure enter the cabin. It was walking slowly and heavily. It was dragging the axe on the floor. It was looking for me. I heard it knock on the bedroom door. Then the living room door. Then the kitchen door. It was getting closer. I crouched in the corner of the bathroom and prayed. I hoped that it was a prank or a nightmare. I hoped that it would go away. I hoped that I would survive. I heard it knock on the bathroom door. It was here. I decided to make a run for it and open the door. I expected to see the hooded figure with the axe, but there was nothing there. The cabin was empty and silent. I felt a wave of relief and confusion. To this day, I still don't know if it was all my imagination or something else. I wanted to go camping in the wilderness, away from the noise and stress of the city. That's why I rented a cabin in the Yosemite National Park in California, one of the best states of America for nature lovers. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a clear stream. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. I thought it was the perfect place to relax and enjoy the beauty of nature. I arrived at the cabin in the afternoon, after driving for several hours from San Francisco. I unpacked my car, lit a fire, and made some coffee. I decided to explore the area a bit, so I grabbed my camera and walked along the stream. The scenery was breathtaking, with snow-capped mountains, green meadows, and colorful wildflowers. I took some pictures and admired the view. I felt peaceful and happy. As the sun began to set, I headed back to the cabin. I cooked some dinner, read a book, and watched the stars. I felt sleepy and decided to go to bed. I locked the door, turned off the lights, and crawled into the warm bed. I fell asleep quickly, dreaming of the next day. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze on my face. I opened my eyes and saw that the window was open. I wondered how that happened, since I was sure I closed it before going to bed. I got up and walked towards the window, intending to close it. 
As I approached, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There was a man standing outside the window, staring at me with a twisted smile. He was wearing a dirty coat, a hat, and a mask. He had a knife in his hand, dripping with blood. He looked like a serial killer from a horror movie. He raised his hand and tapped on the glass, making a chilling sound. I screamed and ran to the door, hoping to escape. But the door was locked, and the key was missing. I looked around, panicking, and saw that the key was on the table, next to a note. The note read, Hello, friend. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I've been watching you for a while, and I must say, you are very interesting. See you in a bit. I felt a surge of terror and disbelief. This was a nightmare, it had to be. How could this happen to me? Why me? Who was this man, and what did he want from me? I looked for a weapon, anything to defend myself, but there was nothing. I was trapped, alone, and helpless. I heard the doorknob turn, and the door opened slowly. The man entered the cabin, still smiling. He walked towards me, holding the knife. I backed away, until I hit the wall. There was nowhere to go. He was right in front of me, ready to strike. He said, Goodbye, friend. It's been a pleasure. Don't worry, it will be over soon. Just close your eyes and let it happen. Trust me, it's for the best. He raised the knife and brought it down. I woke up, gasping for air. I was in my bed, in the cabin. It was morning, and the sun was shining. It was all a dream, a horrible, terrible dream. I was alive and safe. There was no killer, no note, no knife. It was all in my head, a product of my imagination. I sighed with relief and wiped the sweat from my forehead. I got up and went to the bathroom. I splashed some water on my face and looked in the mirror and saw something that made my heart stop. There was a red mark on my chest where the knife had stabbed me in my dream. This was really scary. I haven't experienced anything like that again. But I still wonder, how did I got that mark on my chest? I wanted to go camping in Colorado, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so much about the natural beauty, the rugged mountains, and the breathtaking landscape. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental near High Plains Camping, one of the top campgrounds in the state, I didn't hesitate to book it. I drove for hours from Denver, enjoying the scenic views along the way. I arrived at the campground in the late afternoon and checked in at the office. The friendly staff gave me a map and directions to my cabin, which was located at the edge of the property, surrounded by trees and hills. They also warned me about the wildlife in the area and advised me to keep my food and trash secure. I followed the dirt road to my cabin, which was a small wooden structure with a porch and a swing. It looked cozy and rustic, just what I had imagined. I unloaded my car and entered the cabin. It had a living room with a fireplace, a kitchenette, a bathroom, and a bedroom with a full bed and a bunk bed. It was simple but comfortable, and had everything I needed for a relaxing stay. I decided to explore the campground before it got dark. I put on my hiking boots and grabbed my backpack and headed out. The campground was spacious and well-maintained, with a variety of facilities and amenities. There were RV sites, tent sites, and cabins, as well as a playground, a pool, a laundry room, and a store. There were also trails that led to the nearby national forest, where I could enjoy more hiking and biking. I chose one of the trails and followed it into the woods. The air was fresh and crisp, and the sun was shining through the branches. I felt a surge of energy and excitement as I walked among the pine trees and wildflowers. I saw some squirrels and birds, but no other people. I felt like I had the whole forest to myself. I walked for about an hour, until I reached a clearing with a stunning view of the mountains. I stopped and took some pictures, and then sat down on a rock to rest and snack. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal. I didn't mind, though. I was enjoying the solitude and the silence. I was about to get up and head back when I heard a rustling sound behind me. I turned around and saw a large black bear 
standing on its hind legs, about twenty feet away from me. It was staring at me with its dark eyes, and sniffing the air. It must have smelled my food. I felt a surge of fear and panic, as I remembered the staff's warning. I had read somewhere that you should never run from a bear, but try to scare it away by making noise and appearing bigger. I quickly grabbed my backpack and held it over my head, and started yelling and waving my arms. I hoped the bear would get scared and leave. But it didn't. It lowered itself to all fours, and started walking towards me, slowly and steadily. It looked angry and hungry, and ready to attack. I realized that I had made a mistake. I had provoked the bear, instead of deterring it. I had no chance of fighting it off, or outrunning it. I was doomed. I dropped my backpack and ran, hoping to find a way out. I ran as fast as I could, dodging the trees and rocks. I heard the bear behind me, gaining on me. I felt its hot breath on my neck, and its claws on my back. I screamed and fell to the ground, feeling its teeth on my leg. I thought it was the end, but then I heard a gunshot. The bear let go of me and roared, and then collapsed on top of me. I felt its weight crushing me, and its blood soaking me. I tried to push it off, but I couldn't. I was trapped. I heard another gunshot, and then footsteps. I saw a man with a rifle, wearing a ranger's uniform. He came over and lifted the bear off me, and checked my pulse. He looked relieved and said, You're alive. You're lucky I was nearby. I heard your scream and came to help. You're badly injured, but you'll make it. I'll call for help and get you to a hospital. Don't worry, you'll be okay. He took out his radio and called for backup and an ambulance, and then stayed with me until they arrived. When the help arrived, they took me to the hospital, and I somehow survived. This was the closest I had ever come to dying. I wanted to go camping in the woods, so when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I didn't hesitate to book it. It was supposed to be a relaxing getaway from the stress of my job and the city life. I packed my car with some essentials and drove for six hours to reach the campsite. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by tall pine trees and a small lake. It looked cozy and rustic, with a wooden porch and a stone chimney. I got the key from a lockbox and entered the cabin. It had a living room with a fireplace, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was furnished with simple but comfortable furniture and had some paintings and books on the shelves. I felt a wave of peace and happiness wash over me as I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to explore the campsite a bit before it got dark. I put on my jacket and boots and grabbed a flashlight and a map. I locked the cabin door and walked along a dirt trail that led to the lake. The air was crisp and fresh, and I could hear the sounds of birds and insects. I reached the lake and admired the view. The water was clear and calm, reflecting the blue sky and the clouds. I saw some ducks and fish swimming in the lake. I felt a connection with nature and smiled. I walked around the lake for a while, enjoying the scenery and the solitude. I didn't see any other campers or cabins nearby. I felt like I had the whole place to myself. I checked my watch and saw that it was almost 6 p.m. I decided to head back to the cabin and make some dinner. I followed the trail back to the cabin, humming a tune. As I approached the cabin, I noticed something odd. The door was slightly ajar. I frowned and quickened my pace. I reached the cabin and pushed the door open. I gasped and dropped my flashlight. The cabin was a mess. The furniture was overturned, the books and paintings were scattered on the floor, and the fireplace was lit with a roaring fire. I felt a surge of fear and anger. Who did this? How did they get in? I looked around for any signs of the intruder, but I didn't see anyone. I grabbed a kitchen knife and cautiously entered the bedroom. The bed was unmade, and there was a note on the pillow. It read, Hello, friend. I hope you don't mind me borrowing your cabin for a while. Don't worry, I didn't take anything valuable. I just made myself comfortable. I hope you like the fire. It's very cozy, isn't it? I'll be back soon. I have some things to do in the woods. 
Don't try to run away or call for help. I'll know. And I won't like it. See you soon, friend. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the note. I dropped the knife and ran out of the cabin. I got in my car, started the engine and drove away from there. I wanted to go camping, but I never had the chance. So when I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in Yosemite National Park, I decided to book it for a weekend. It was a solo trip, just me and nature. I thought it would be fun and relaxing. The cabin was located in a secluded area, surrounded by trees and mountains. It was small and cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. It had no electricity or phone service, but I didn't mind. I wanted to disconnect from the world for a while. I arrived on Friday afternoon and unpacked my stuff. I made a fire, cooked some dinner, and read a book. It was peaceful and quiet. I felt happy and free. The next day, I woke up early and went for a hike. The scenery was breathtaking. I saw deer, squirrels, and birds. I took some pictures and enjoyed the fresh air. I returned to the cabin around noon and ate some sandwiches. I decided to take a nap since I was tired from the walk. I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke up, it was dark outside. I checked my watch, and it was almost 10 p.m. I must have slept through the whole afternoon and evening. I felt a bit groggy, but I got up and stretched. I decided to make some coffee and watch the stars. I went to the kitchen and turned on the gas stove. I filled the kettle with water and put it on the burner. I waited for it to boil, and then I heard a loud bang. I jumped and looked around. It sounded like someone had slammed the door. I ran to the living room and saw that the front door was wide open. I felt a cold breeze and a shiver ran down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and walked towards the door. I looked outside and saw nothing but darkness. I called out, Hello? Is anyone there? But there was no answer. I felt a surge of fear and wondered who or what had opened the door. Maybe it was an animal, or a prankster, or a robber. I didn't know, but I didn't want to find out. I quickly closed the door and locked it. I also checked the windows and made sure they were shut. I tried to calm myself down and told myself that it was nothing. Maybe the wind had blown the door open, or maybe I had forgotten to close it properly. I decided to ignore it and go back to the kitchen. I walked to the kitchen and saw that the kettle was boiling. I turned off the stove and poured some water into a mug. I added some instant coffee and stirred it. I took a sip and felt the warmth in my throat. I felt a bit better and decided to go to the bedroom. I grabbed my book and headed to the bedroom. I opened the door and turned on the flashlight. I scanned the room and saw that everything was in order. I put the book and the mug on the nightstand and got into the bed. I pulled the blanket over me and turned off the flashlight. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I was too tense and nervous. I kept thinking about the door and the noise and the possibility of someone or something lurking outside. I wished I had brought a weapon or a phone or a friend. I felt vulnerable and alone. I tossed and turned and listened to the sounds of the night. I heard the wind and the fire and the crickets. They were normal and soothing sounds, but they didn't help me relax. Then I heard something else. Something that made my blood run cold. It was a scream. A loud, piercing, human scream. It came from somewhere outside, and it lasted for a few seconds. Then it stopped, and there was silence. I froze and felt my heart pounding. I opened my eyes and looked at the window. It was pitch black and I couldn't see anything. I wondered who had screamed and why and where. I wondered if they were okay or if they were in trouble or if they were dead. I felt a surge of panic and wanted to get out of there. I wanted to run to my car and drive away and never come back. But I was too scared to move. I was afraid that if I got out of the bed, something would grab me, or attack me, or kill me. I stayed in the bed, 
and curled up into a ball. I covered my ears and closed my eyes. I prayed for the morning to come and for the nightmare to end. But it didn't. It got worse. I heard another scream. And another. And another. They were different voices, male and female, young and old. They sounded like they were in pain, or in fear, or in agony. They sounded like they were dying. I heard them coming from different directions, and getting closer. I heard them getting louder, and more desperate. I heard them begging, and crying, and cursing. I didn't know what was happening, or why, or how. I didn't know who was screaming, or who was making them scream, or what was making them scream. I didn't know if it was real, or a dream, or a hallucination. I only knew that I was terrified, and that I wanted it to stop. But it didn't. It kept going. I heard the screams getting closer, and closer, and closer. I heard them getting louder, and louder, and louder. I heard them getting right outside my door, and right outside my window, and right outside my head. I heard them screaming, and screaming, and screaming. And then I heard nothing. I opened my eyes and saw the sun. It was shining through the window and filling the room with light. It was morning and it was quiet. I looked at the clock and saw that it was 7 a.m. I had survived the night. I felt a wave of relief and a wave of confusion. I wondered what had happened and what had caused the screams and where they had gone. I wondered if it was over or if it would happen again. I decided to find out. I got out of the bed and put on my clothes. I grabbed my keys and my wallet and my phone. I left the book and the mug and the flashlight. I didn't care about them. I walked to the living room and saw that the fire was out. I walked to the kitchen and saw that the coffee was cold. I walked to the door and saw that it was locked. I unlocked the door and opened it. I stepped outside and looked around. There was a small pool of blood near the cabin, about ten feet away. It looked fresh and bright, and it contrasted with the green grass and the blue sky. It made me feel sick and scared. I wondered where it came from, and who it belonged to. I wondered if it had anything to do with the screams, and the blood on the cabin, and the mystery of the night. I wondered if I was in danger, or if I was safe. I didn't want to wonder anymore. I wanted to get out of there and forget everything. I wanted to go back to my normal life and pretend that none of this had ever happened. I ran to my car and got in. I started the engine and backed up. I turned around and drove away. I didn't look back and I didn't stop. I drove as fast as I could and as far as I could. I drove until I reached the nearest town 